Welcome, everyone, to the Sounds of Stories. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode from the Sounds of Stories. Tonight, even though we are a whole day behind, we have a short episode for True and False Friday. And as far as the true and false is concerned, I read the story, and it's your job to tell me if you believe the story is true or false. Remember, if it sounds too real to be true, it's probably false. And if it sounds too far out there to be false, it's probably true. Let's see if we can't make this the shortest episode yet. So without further babbling, here is Chosen by God to Choose a President. Written, narrated, edited, and produced by the Sounds of Stories. Chosen by God to Choose a President. Stephen Van Rensselaer III was born on November 1, 1764 in New York City. And as you probably could have guessed, Stephen Van Rensselaer III's father was of course Stephen Van Rensselaer Jr. But what you might not have known was his mother was Katharina Livingston. Katharina was a daughter of Philip Livingston, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. When Stephen was just 21... He became owner of a 1,200-square-mile estate handed down to him by his family. As new lord of the Rensselaer Manor, Stephen began to lease out his land to potential families who had a desire to become farmers. Soon, Stephen acquired more than 80,000 tenants. Stephen was a gracious landlord, and due to his religious and pious manner, he was lenient toward all those who leased land from him. And as far as payments went... He always desired late payments over having to evict his tenants. And as a result of his forgiveness and patience, people simply loved Stephen. Seeing so many people in tough times, along with a deep desire to help those he could, was what made Stephen quite the philanthropist. To add to the responsibility of being the most prestigious landlord ever in America, Stephen Rensselaer III became a member of the New York State Assembly in 1789 at the age of only 25 years old. That title lasted for two short years in which afterwards he became a member of the U.S. Senate at the age of 27. Then, the same year he departed from Senator in 1795, he became Lieutenant Governor of New York for six years. Stephen dedicated his life to public service. Unlike some of today's politicians... Stephen's desire to serve the citizens of the United States was never due to the money he would earn from the taxpayers. After all, Stephen Rensselaer was one of the wealthiest men in the world at that time. He would have been worth a staggering $150 billion in today's world. But of all the responsibilities that our billionaire protagonist Stephen Rensselaer had during the course of his life, none was more important than a decision he was asked to make on February 9, 1825. After a U.S. presidential election complication, two of the presidential candidates at that time, John Quincy Adams and William Crawford, were vying for the New York vote. The two candidates were tied for the vote, and it was up to just one man, Stephen Rensselaer III, to decide who would tip the scale and win the coveted vote of New York. For the winner of New York would most likely be Andrew Jackson and become the 10th president of these great United States. Stephen felt the enormous weight of this decision. And being a religious and pious man, all he could think to do was simply pray. So in front of all to see, he bowed his head, closed his eyes, and prayed that God would help him make his decision. Following the conclusion of his prayer, he opened his eyes. And when he did so, he saw a ballot laying just before him with the name John Quincy Adams on it. At that moment, Stephen's decision was made. He then casted his vote for Adams. And it was this one vote from Stephen Rensselaer III which allowed Adams to win the New York vote, and that vote allowed him to win the presidential election of 1824. In the end, John Quincy Adams had Stephen Rensselaer III to thank for his presidential victory, and Stephen Rensselaer III had God to thank for helping him make such a tough and important decision. All right, everyone, what do you think? 
True or false? As far as the story chosen by God to choose a president is concerned, this story is... Let's see here. True? You're telling me John Quincy Adams made it to the Oval Office on a prayer. What a Federalist. Whatever that means. Well, everyone, we hope you've enjoyed your time here spent with us listening to the Sounds of Stories original, chosen by God to choose a president. Remember to like and rate the story as well as follow and subscribe. Music and sounds done by Epidemic Sound, and the amazing musical contributors are Dream Cave and Christopher Mo Diddlesvin. Come back soon for another episode.